you'll need more than just a soldering iron when building electronics. In fact, there's a whole array of tools which are essential, or at least very helpful to the process. So, let's get right to it. After soldering each component, you'll need to trim leads with a pair of cutters. These are an indispensable part of the circuit board building process. This particular pair are referred to as flush diagonal cutters. Flush because they allow you to cut leads as close to the board as possible, and diagonal because the blades are angled, allowing you to reach into some tight spots. Which leads me to another sort of slicing tool, wire strippers. These are pretty much self-explanatory. They're your best friend when prepping wire for soldering. Most pairs are designed to handle a range of solid and stranded gauge wire, and usually include an integrated pair of straight clippers. You can also find automatic wire strippers, which are great for preparing large batches of wire with uniform lead length. Besides cutting tools, you'll also need a good pair of needle nose or flat nose pliers. When building electronics, pliers are essential for gripping, bending, and positioning component leads with a greater degree of accuracy than fingers can provide. They're also very helpful when straightening mangled leads and holding parts which are too hot to handle or too cold to hold. In any case, you can grab a pair of pliers and you're in control. And when your components are too small to handle, reach for a pair of fine-tipped tweezers. Unlike the standard tweezers in your medicine cabinet, these have, as the name implies, a very fine, sharp tip. Additionally, this pair is ESD safe, so you don't have to worry about discharging static electricity into those sensitive IC pins. You'll find tweezers available in straight and angle tip variants. The angled version makes it a bit easier to place SMD chips precisely on the respective pads. While working on your circuit board with all these hand tools, you'll want something to keep your PCB stable. And a PCB vise works quite nicely for this. The position of the head is easily adjustable, and it can be mounted to the workbench for added stability. And you can always upgrade to a pro model for use with larger boards. When handling smaller and more awkwardly shaped soldering subjects, a helping hands or third hand tool can be employed. By default, the jaws on these things are a little severe. I recommend padding them by adding a bit of heat shrink tubing. Now, you don't have to worry about causing any damage while, say, tinning the wire. And for a massive upgrade, look to this super fancy third hand. This beast has posable tentacle-like arms with a lot of reach, plus a substantial base with trays for parts. Oh, and the jaws on this one come pre-dampened. Considering the size of our subject matter, you'll likely want some magnification. I keep a magnifier loop on hand for this. It's small and easy to move around a board. Great for checking a board for solder bridges. Alternatively, many helping hand tools come equipped with a magnifying lens. Once you get a closer look at your board, you may notice it needs some cleaning. It's a good idea to keep a brush around for removing caked on dirt, dust, flux, etc. This one is ESD safe, so it won't harm ICs and other sensitive devices. If you're not working with ESD sensitive materials, you can get away with using an old toothbrush. Just don't get it confused with your actual toothbrush. When you need precise measurements, you need calipers. These are particularly useful when measuring components for PCB design or 3D printing. 
One side is used to measure objects, while the other is used to measure openings. And you can easily switch units between millimeters and inches. Of course, you will find additional tools out there, but you'll find yourself returning to these basics over and over again. And remember, if you take care of your tools, they'll take care of you.